Hello my wonderful movie peeps, we finally got some news to talk about here today, so let's start discussing. We're going to be talking about our first reactions to The Nun 2. We got an update on the upcoming Strangers reboot trilogy that has me very pumped. As well as talking about what's going on with Aquaman 2 and why have they not released a trailer for this movie yet. Really, that alone with so much more, so I'm going to need you guys to give me your opinions down below with everything we discuss here today. Before we begin with all the news, I do need your guys' assistance. As you know, the Spooky Mama season is approaching very closely and around this time of the year, you know I like to change the set. I'm having a difficult time figuring out though what I want to do this year, so I'm willing to take up your suggestions about what you think should happen on the set. I'm going to put up a blank photo of the set right there, you know. Don't use this for any nefarious purposes to so like Photoshop some funny memes in there. I would totally hate that. But if you have your own suggestions for what you would want to see changed in the set for the Spooky Mama season, go ahead, Photoshop it on, or just write in words what you would want in certain cubbies and whatnot. You can submit this to me over on the 3C Red Reddit page, you can tag me on Twitter, DM me on Instagram, wherever. I'll be looking at the suggestions and you might even see yours pop up in the video where I finally do the vlog and do all that. Kicking things off here with something a little fun, we recently had Giancarlo Esposito, aka Gus, reveal during a convention that he's been in talks with James Gunn. I had been talking to James Gunn about the possibility about being in a movie. So. Who knows? It could happen soon. Now this is interesting for a couple of reasons, because if you've been following the superhero movie news space, you know Giancarlo Esposito has also been talking to Kevin Feige. The man is playing both heads of the comic book universe. It's said that he's been working closely with Kevin Feige to figure out a role in the MCU. A lot of rumors have been pointing to him maybe being like the new Magneto, the new Charles Xavier for the MCU. But those have been more fan casting and rumors. It was said he was actually going to play a villainous role in the upcoming Loki series, but he's tired of playing villains. He kind of doesn't want to always be known for playing the villainous guy, although he does a great job with that. He would like to play the good guy every now and then and maybe James Gunn is willing to provide that for him now I'm not saying he's gonna you know star in his own superhero movie but he could play a big supporting role in one of these films I've seen some people already start to mention the Lucius Fox for the Batman Brave and the Bold universe that's I guess one possibility and that would put him in the category of a good person I know a lot of us had fan castings for him to play Mr. Freeze in the Matt Reeves universe but again that would go against him wanting to play a good guy now part of me also wonders if he said this this out loud to just kind of kick Kevin Feige's butt into shape and be like, look, if you're not going to offer me a role I want, DC is knocking at my door, Feige. What you got? Could very well be a tactic on his part just to get a role either way in these superhero films. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. That's a very Gus move of you, and I respect it. So it'll be interesting to see where Giancarlo Esposito ends up. He could end up being in both universes. That's happened before with actors. But this is why I toss it off to you guys. What good guy role could you see Giancarlo Esposito playing either in the DC universe or in the Marvel universe? Bringing us to our next movie news story here. You know, it was just the other day on the live stream here I did on YouTube where one of you asked me, Yo, what's going on with the strangers? Because if you guys don't know, we are getting three stranger movies that have already been filmed, okay? It's not a situation where, oh, they made one and we're going to see how this one does if they want to make the other two. No, these three stranger movies have already been filmed. They're going to be starring Madeline Pesh. It's considered a sort of remake reboot, so it's not really connected to the other two stranger movies. And well, of course, with the Hollywood strike and things going on, it was kind of silent on it. But thanks to a fan website that's been keeping up with all the Stranger news, they did some digging and realized that back in Comic-Con, there was actually a panel for this movie that was supposed to be there until the strike got announced and then they canceled their plans. But the link for this canceled panel is still there where they gave us a bit of a description on the movie that kind of surprised me. So on this canceled Comic-Con panel, the description reads, actress and executive producer Madeline Pesh from Riverdale and producer Courtney Solomon discuss The Strangers and will provide an exclusive first look clip from their new horror trilogy, which will be in theaters from Lionsgate in 2024. Now, the part that sticks out to me the most from that is the fact that this trilogy will be going to theaters. As of right now, when that Comic-Con panel was about to happen, that was the plan. It's going to theaters, and I'm like, 
Okay. Now, the reason I'm surprised by this is because, like I told you, they filmed all three movies back to back. They're finished, completed, just sitting on a shelf somewhere waiting to be released. With something like that, it gave me kind of like Fear Street vibes with what Netflix did. You know, they made the three Fear Street movies and then they released them periodically throughout that year. I think like, what, two or three weeks out. And so this kind of gave me the same vibe. It's like, oh, this will probably be shopped around to Netflix, Amazon Prime, you know, maybe even Shudder. Who knows? But no, they're going to be planning to release this in theaters and I have so many questions about how they plan to do that is this going to be kind of like a Blumhouse Halloween situation where they'll release one a year for the next three years you know every Halloween Strangers 1 then the next Halloween Strangers 2 then the last one the finale to this trilogy a three-year wait or are they going to be trying to pull something different since these movies have already been shot will we get like the first one in January then we get like the second one that summer and then we get to end off the trilogy the same year by Halloween that would be kind of wild and a first for Hollywood, I think. So I don't know, kind of exciting and interesting. I'm still looking forward just to see, you know, what they made the strangers look like this time around, whether they'll still be looking the way they traditionally did in those other two movies. What big story did they plan out for a whole trilogy? I don't know, this is where I throw it off to you guys. You hear that the strangers trilogy is set to be a theatrically debuted movie. How do you think they'll go about releasing them? Bringing us here into our next story that looks like it's just gonna piss off some people. We've got word that She-Hulk season two is going to be happening. Thanks to Scooper, my time to shine hello, they reported that She-Hulk season two is happening, or I should say will happen post strike. Now, a couple of thoughts on this right now. I would think She-Hulk is probably one of the most hated shows of the Disney plus era. I remember the controversy, all the people getting mad and whatnot. And look, say what you want about She-Hulk, it was a show I actually didn't mind. I actually kind of enjoyed She-Hulk. You know, putting together all the things like that, I feel like it's a little overhated. But even with that said, the show was far from perfect and it did suffer from a lot of these Marvel Disney plusisms that I kind of hate. I kind of actually am looking forward to a season two because I like Jennifer Walters, the She-Hulk character played by Tatiana Maslany. I feel like there is an easy formula for like a really fun show in there where every episode is dedicated to a superhero court case. I just think when the show leaned a little too hard in addressing the trolls and trying to fight back to them, it just became really no fun for either side. The show shot when you had like collabs with like Daredevil in there and they were teaming up and doing those fight sequences and expanding the Marvel Universe a little bit and then you know just randomly introducing the Hulk back with a son out of nowhere which when are we gonna get that resolved Kevin Feige what's going on there so again part of me is like maybe looking forward to season two if they can kind of fix their mistakes from the previous season not make it so much about addressing trolls and just kind of focus on making a fun show I'll be honest too I'm surprised there's even a season two of anything being considered right now because Disney seems pretty focused now on kind of lessening down their Disney Plus output and hopefully focusing more on the movie side of things. But uh, this is why I throw off to you guys. She-Hulk season two, you know, what do you think the pros and cons are, whether you're someone who liked or hated the She-Hulk series? And well, speaking of trailers, man, Aquaman, my boy, Momoa, my man, where you at? People have started to notice that, you know, the next DC movie or the last DCEU movie, whatever James Gunn is planning, we still don't really know, is going to be releasing December of this year, about three to four months out, and we have no teaser trailer, no official trailer, not even an official poster, and people have come to realize this is the first DC movie in a very long time that has a real short gap from when it's being marketed to when it's released. Every other DC movie has had a teaser trailer or a big trailer at least six months before the release of the movie, sometimes even a whole year before. I think that's how it was for Blue Beetle. We got like our first trailer for Blue Beetle 10 months before that movie came out. Now we're almost four, three months from Aquaman 2 and nada. You know, the constant thing we're hearing rumor wise is test screenings have not been going great for this film, that the fans have actually been very negative on this movie and that's so surprising to me as a James Wan fan but you know I got to thinking about it and I was like could James Wan really disappoint us that bad I like the idea for Aquaman 2 it's gonna be you know Arthur teaming up with his brother and they're going on this adventure and Black Manta gets like this hidden power that makes him OP I even love the Black Manta Sue like I don't see how you can mess that up so bad but then I think back to like when James Wan had another big movie up and coming Malignant that was a big horror movie for James 
James Wan, okay? This was like his debut in an original horror movie. People were excited, you know? And then we started hearing the rumors that those test screenings were terrible. People did not like Malignant. And I was like, damn, that sucks. And I saw Malignant, and I was like, okay, I, I understand why not a lot of people like this, but I freaking love this movie. And I'm wondering if maybe James Wan applied that same sense to Aquaman 2, where it's just not your traditional superhero movie. It kind of goes out there. It gets a little weird. It gets a little wild. And it's not for everybody, but maybe, you know, the more hardcore film fans or superhero fans will appreciate it for being different. I'm trying to be positive here, man. Let me cook. It's just definitely a terrible sign that we are this close and they still haven't figured out, you know, what do we even market it? Because it's supposedly they've gone through so many reshoots and changes and switching scenes up and doing all this. And, you know, James Gunn is now adding in his own thing, what he wants added on or not. He's going to probably add some super ambiguous post credit scene that it's like movie does good. Aquaman stays movie does bad he's in that flash george clooney universe now but uh this is where i throw it off to you guys you know you see aquaman 2 still has yet to have any marketing done the film is getting closer what is the dealio bringing us to a horror movie i've had little faith in this year but now i'm kind of surprised we have gotten our first reactions to the nun 2 this movie is said to be coming september 9th so it's only about a week and a half out and well a bunch of critics have been able to see the movie and it's actually getting somewhat positive reviews or more positive than i was expecting let me run through some of these we have here someone saying the nun 2 is infinitely better than the first installment the characters of irene and maurice are explored in in a more meaningful way and the greater conjuring universe is impacted rather significantly the nun 2 is so extra and goes so hard that i'm now instantly obsessed and i will not be talking about anything else for the foreseeable future Bravo, Akela Cooper and Michael Chavez. Another review here that says The Nun is infinitely better than the first film. It's scarier and much more intense. This is what I wanted out of the first one, which was too heavy and bogged down with lore. Now we get to have fun with this terrifying villain. Stay for the mid credit scene. Another one here says The Nun 2 is a super solid horror sequel. It's got two good stories that intersect into a fantastic third act, which is amazing until it loses his focus just a bit right at the end that misstep aside it's got awesome scares effects and sister irene is legit a legend now i know a lot of people like to take these first reactions with a grain of salt but these seem realistic to me i like that a lot of people are being honest and mentioning wasn't a fan of the first movie and this one is much better than the first and that's all i really wanted i'm also curious what this post credit scene or tease for the larger conjuring universe is because i've seen a lot of reactions mention there's something big at the end of this that impacts the entire universe you know aside from the mcu it's been already stated that the conjuring universe is one of the most successful interconnected universes out there they all turn a profit whether they get good or bad reviews they're continuing chuckling along and warner brothers has no plans to stop with this we know they got the conjuring 4 coming up they're gonna make a tv series you know they're gonna try and make a nun 3 so while i'm still hesitant and i'm gonna wait to see it for myself to see if it actually is that good or fun i'm glad to hear here there is some positivity for the nun because I loved her introduction in The Conjuring 2 was so disappointed with her solo movie and with the writer of Malignant and Megan Akela Cooper attached to this I'm hoping for something fun with this little nun excuse me I lost my temper there for a second let me know what you guys think about these reactions for the nun 2 and whether you're still hesitant or this makes you excited talking about now the first teaser trailer for Chucky season 3 I was hoping to make this its own video but after watching the teaser there really isn't that much to speculate and wonder on for it to have a whole video but looking at this first teaser it's great to see Devin Sawa back he's always returning as a new character each season and always ends up dying so Chucky's killing the president this season it is an interesting change of location I even like what they did in the trailer where they have the slow down star spangled banner playing very creepy other than that it's just interesting how little of information they gave us even where the trailer was released on the sci-fi channel they still have the plot synopsis for season two so they don't give us the plot for this season. I'm still pretty sure the original trio from the last two seasons are going to be returning. Funny how they'll be included this time around. But so far, the only people we have confirmed back now is Devin Sawa and Jennifer Tilly is set to be returning.
journey. And you know, there's a giant cliffhanger from last season left unanswered. I kind of wouldn't mind if this season they just tell their own story and let go of all that stuff. While I still like the casting characters there, last season left me a little bit soured and I'm hoping season three goes back to kind of the scary vibes. Before the Hollywood strike happened, they've only filmed the first four episodes and we're set to only get four episodes so far this season and then they'll probably leave us on a cliffhanger until the strike is over and they can continue filming the rest so yeah i like how this trailer was mainly serious sticking to the creepy vibe sure we got one little chucky one-liner at the end they're saying god bless america but we can always expect a little chucky one-liners here and there so I'm open to this season. I'm looking forward to how they wrap everything up. But tossing it over to you guys. You saw the trailer for Chucky Season 3. How are you feeling about things this time around? But that's all the movie news we currently have going on right now, guys. I want to thank you so much for taking time my day to watch me talk some movie news. Don't be forgetting to hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Follow me on Twitter at 3C Films or on TikTok at 3C Films. But as always, I'm Chris. Take care.